here we are. We're dropped right in this world. We're born in this in in this lifetime, and the beginning of our consciousness really starts off with what the way I exper experientially or psychologically understand these worlds as follows. That Asiya is what happens to me. Yitzira formation is by me. Bria is through me. Whereas Atsilut is with me. And we're going to go through each one. So when we start our journey of consciousness, of ascending up the ladder, right? This is where most people actually are stuck in this world. They're in the lowest realm, right? This, this, this place of victimhood. And life happens to me. So there's basically a big unknown that which constantly is happening. Life is throwing stuff at me. Things are happening. I'm getting all these situations are just happening all the time. What do we feel like? We feel like a victim. And the truth is most people really are in this place of victimhood, of of, you know, life is happening to me, right? Whereas the next level is the world of Yetzirah, where we get a little bit more of a consciousness and we want to have self-discovery. What do we want to do? We take charge and we develop that independence of self. And at this point, we want to rebel. We want to be different than our parents which is a healthy thing. It's actually, a, it's, it, it's, the, it's a part of our, our, you know, formation. Again, the world of formation, it's a formation of self. Where does formation of self happen? Not when, you know, when we're in, you know, the status quo or whatever it is in, in, in our parents' houses when we grow up, but we realize that we want to be something and we want to be, very often different and we want to prove ourselves so at this level life is happening by me right i decide at a certain point to take the bull by the horns to say the heck with everyone else the heck with what my parents think the heck with what my you know the society even agrees says i'm going to be doing exactly what it is that i truly believe in that I want to do, that I believe, and it's and it's form, it's it's forging self, the identity of self, of what it is, of who I am, right? And that's the second world, or the second stage of consciousness. So the first stage of consciousness is I'm a victim. Life is happening to me. The second world, is life is is happening by me. I'm now deciding what to do. But yet you could hear a little bit of this battle that is still going on between, I don't care what people think about me. I'm deciding to do something. So at this point, this is a stage where, you know, we find ourselves in for a prolonged amount in, in, in our lives, right? And um, that we, we forge the identity of who we are and what it is that, we, that we're going to be doing. And then the third level, the world of Bria, is life is happening through me. Basically, we're becoming a vessel for God. And at this point, we could say that idea of channeling or whatever that means is life is happening through me. That the difference between the second world of formation, the world of creation, is that on, on the that third world, we realize that I'm a vessel for the creator. I am in service to the creator. And therefore, the creator is going to use me to be able to do whatever he wants done. And whether, and 
the thing about that is that most people are not aware that that is actually happening all the time. Yes, we make our choices, but at the end of the day, like, you know, we are taking places and we do meet the people that we need to meet and that we do make the, you know, we, we have these interactions unknowingly, mostly unknowingly, right? Unless we're open to the fact that this is actually happening. And life is happening through me. And in truth, I could do so much more if I allow Hashem, if I allow God to express himself through me in terms of creativity, in terms of, of, of calm, in terms of productivity and on, on all levels, instead of thinking that I'm the doer and I'm the one that's accomplishing. So that's maybe that was, the word, the so word that, bikuda. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like without <laughs> the ego, basically. It's without it's your exactly ego. Exactly that. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly that. I was gonna yeah. say the the word bitul, bitul. Yeah, that's that exactly, Liti. Yeah, bitul, the nullification, which is which is actually I, I heard this said, bitul is the letters be a tool, like bitul means nullified in Hebrew, but it also that's means awesome. Bitul. Yes, <laughs> bitul, yeah, I think it's the Shis Tau said that that bitul <laughs> is be a tool. Who are you a tool for? So we're a tool for the for Hashem, for the divine. And right, and it doesn't have to be anything major. It's not like, oh, only if I do these big, it's in the day-to-day, -day, it's in the ordinary, it's in the moment to it's in the moment to moment that that we are a channel for Hashem and feeling Hashem in our lives. Life is happening through me. So it's much richer because the ego limits us from fully enjoying in truth, because it's saying you're only going to enjoy if this and this and that. And the ego is basically this, the unhealthy ego, right? Because there still is the ego there. And we'll get to that in a second. But the unhealthy ego is still the victim mentality ego or the, um, or the by me ego that's saying I'm doing all the stuff, like I'm accomplishing, etc. Whereas the through me ego saying, yes, I have strengths. I'm God has endowed me with this and that and the other, and I'm using that to serve to serve Him. Um, it's James, like a surrendering. A surrendering. It is a, exactly. It's a surrendering. It's a surrendering and. And embracing of something, something much greater than the self, than the limited self. And isn't isn't life just much more enjoyable when when we are able to sur surrender like that? Because when we think how it's going to turn out, like when we want to take a walk, I don't know, go to the beach or something. So I imagine that it's going to be like this or like that. And then when you don't have those expectations. And it's not like your ego saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm already, I'm limiting myself in how it's going to look like because it happened like that last week or the week before. And I'm already having a picture of what it's going to be like versus let me just walk in with no expectations, with just open heart and being, right, having that open heart and just allow the moment to be and allow the experience to be and allow what comes through in this experience. And that inner child is always going to be reignited again. And he or she is always there. It doesn't come to a place where it says like, okay, if I get the job, if I work hard enough, and then I'll just, then I'll, you know, I'll forget about that, you know, that voice. Right. Or even if I, it comes through me, I'll forget about the voice. No, the voice, af asitiv, even in the world of asiya, that fragile part of ourselves, the victim part of ourselves, where at least we, the perception is the victim part of ourselves. Even that is meant to be transmuted and brought into the light. And especially that part is meant to be brought into the light. And at that point, it becomes a place of, of what? Of with me, 
where we utilize all parts of the self, that even the negative, where, we're, where we look at ourselves and that the unconscious part of ourselves is, was there for such a long time. And, and, and we realize that it's all for a greater purpose and that we can love ourselves even with the flaws. And it's not like any like cushy thing of like, oh, I love self-love. Like, yes, loving ourselves is within this realm of atzilut, of with me, that realizing that God created me, especially exactly the way I am and exactly the makeup with the exact parents, with the exact time that, you know, when I was born and where I was born, it was all completely ordained, preordained with all of the pain that came along with it. Everything. It's all part of the package. And when when we when I embrace that as well, then I embrace a much higher reality where the where the darkness and the light, where the vessel and the light are not two separate things. It's really all, it's really all one. And obviously this is a very big place. I mean, not very few people, you know, live in this space. It says that the, you know, Avram Avinu and Moshe, like, you know, simultaneously lived in the higher, this world of Atsilut and this world. And there was no distinction. They were just basically one. Um, our, you know, our work is to, first of all, to be aware of these, you know, of these paradigms, to be aware that, you know, these, you know, as we started off with, these spiritual worlds are, yes, they are real, they're realities outside of us that surround us, that are here at all times, simultaneously. We don't have an awareness of them right necessarily but we can have an awareness of them in at certain times and when we work on ourselves and basically you know starting from the victim to the co-creator where we realize Hashem has created us in the exact perfect way 